Hello and welcome to episode 3 of the Eagerly Cast podcast. I'm your host Jason Purdy and today I'm here with Michael Ritchie. Hello. And Aidan McNichol. No. <laughs> Aidan is not here. And today we're going to we're gonna discuss basically the latest in video game news and what kind of stuff we've been playing. So we'll just jump straight into it then. Because I always wondered, so with podcasts do they normally just kind of like record for a bit so when kind of like a conversation gets started and then they kind of like, yeah, that's it. I basically start recording from whenever we all come into the room because then if we say anything funny, I'll just splice it in later somewhere. Yeah, that's clever. Uh, that that's has, very clever. That hasn't happened yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like a safe. Is this a safe haven thing where we can release our emotions? <laughs> uh, talk about your feelings if you want. <laughs> I cried at the end of Titanic. Marty and me was really sad. <laughs> So what do you do if there's like a silent bit where no one said anything? Do you just like cut that out? We've actually never had that. Really? Yeah. Well, it's because yeah. I was expecting it to happen right there after I said it. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> Could everyone shut up. We've actually never had that. Ooh. And then pure silent crickets chirp. Someone quick drop a pen. <laughs> so should we talk about Kingsman? I haven't, see, I haven't seen it. Have you I seen know. it? We both went to yeah. see it last oh, night. But separately. Because we're only work colleagues, we're not friends. Burn! I feel actually quite bad. I'm sorry about that. That seemed overly harsh. I was like, screw you. I enjoyed it. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I recognise it as something I should have enjoyed and didn't. And I don't know why. And it's confusing me. <laughs> I'm not sure if I oh, I feel this I, way. I, I may have got, I don't know, I got old maybe. I'm not, but I just like, uh, that was kind of silly. I was really looking forward to it and then I saw the trailer and I was like, oh, cut. See, the thing was like, I, uh, I hadn't heard anything about it until I saw a trailer for it. And I was like, oh, Matthew Vaughn's doing a new film and it's a Mark Miller comic book. So that's going to be good. And it was. It will be, be just like Kick-Ass. Oh wait. <laughs> <laughs> See, Kick Ass was really, really good. I really enjoyed the first one, but the second one was. Oh, yeah, the second one was the second one. Yeah. Oh, shall that. we start talking about yes. the games we played? Games. Yeah. <laughs> you can go first then. Uh, Mr. Wright. Grim Fandango, the remastered I've been playing. <laughs> and it's funny. <laughs> and it's got really good, like, mix of me- like Mexican folklore and sort of like a film noir art deco thing going on. But it's like such a nineties adventure game. It's like so harsh. It's just, no, well, it's not harsh. It's just like there's no hint system, and there are leaps of logic that are so dense <laughs> that I basically spent most of my time with a fac open on my other monitor, just reading what to do because I could not figure it out. See, I always feel really bad when I get to that point with games. Like when I'm playing a game, and I get stuck. And like, maybe the first challenge, I'm like, oh, I'm enjoying this game. I can't be ours to deal with this. Yeah. And so like, I don't know so if it's, if I can't tell if it's just me being an idiot or if. No, no, those, those, those games are like, because there was an indie one called Ben There, Dan That. Oh, it was ridiculous for Leaps of Logic. Yeah. None of it made any sense. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it was a fun game, but it literally I got to a point where I was like, F- this, I can't find this by myself and had to like Google it and stuff. But it was it was a really really fun game. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, like, well, Grim was very funny, and I like the art. Uh, what are you using? Um, is there like two control systems in it? I remember here and like, yeah, well, no, they put in this thing where it's kind of like you know that Halo anniversary edition. Yeah. So you can sort of like turn between old graphics and new graphics. Oh, the backgrounds that. haven't changed much. Uh, they've just put in like they've like retextured all the characters and put like dynamic lighting on them and stuff. Yeah. Because like it used to be like the character was the exact same color. No matter where it was, so even if like it was a really dark room, I'd game, be like, Wee! he would still just be like properly lit. So now like he, like he's dark, or there's shadows display on and stuff like that. The thing about that, because I've seen you playing it like over your shoulder, like all the time. I'm always watching it. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> the thing that bugs me is the fact that the corner for that is like the like, because it's not widescreen they cut off so much yeah. of the edge of the screen with this big art deck of like metal furniture yeah, because, that's because it was originally in 4.3 yeah. like, they would have had to like I don't know stretch it out or do that you seen that thing where they raised the HD version of the wire and all the it just looks wrong because yeah, all they've done is stretch the sides out and cut the top and bottom off 
So oh, there's yes. like scenes where no one has a forehead. Yeah. And, like, their chins are missing or something. It, it looks awful. I, I think it's a better choice because well, they, they would have yeah. had to redo a lot more if they wanted to do it in widescreen. I know for the, the Resident Evil <coughs> remake, they actually like redid it for widescreen and full screen and stuff. So they probably should have done that. Instead of being so lazy. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be that hard. See, I, I didn't realise how many... like Because uh, earlier you pointed out to me that there was, like, in the email you were saying there's a lot of kind of, like, remakes and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, really? And then I went on, like, game trailers and stuff and literally, like, five of the yeah. things that were reviewed this month were remakes. It's like... And most of them aren't proper remakes as well, which is annoying. Like, I like, I like the Red Resident Evil one because I absolutely love Resident Evil. Um, yeah. But the thing is, I, I played that version on the GameCube, and <laughs> so it's like a re- it's a remaster of a. Well, remaster. it's a new control scheme on it, and it looks really nice. Yeah, it does. Look but good. again, I didn't. I like the time controls. What? I believe. I believe they don't. Do, they they have no place in modern games. But oh yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I have no problem with them, and yeah. I don't really. I would, I'm not going to pay. Was it like twelve quid or something so. for a new control scheme? Yeah. So. I thought it was like full price retail, but if it's twelve pound, I'll pick it up. I've never it's actually. Not that, I've it's never twenty quid at most. I haven't checked. Yeah, because I've never played the first Resident Evil. Then you, <laughs> so you're, you're a bad you, person. You should buy it then. Yeah, because that game is class. I've I've, it's, I've, it's I've the, seen the game played like from start to finish. All the people played it, but I've never actually played a second of it myself. It's I've never played it. any of the Resident Evil games. <sighs> I don't. I can't play scary games. Yeah. It was no, but they weren't. They weren't pretty scary. And anything like, what's that fighting game? Condemned. Yeah. I couldn't well, play Condemned. You know, that game's up. Like, it is. It is genuinely scary. It's barely a fighting. You're like game. beating homeless people who have like black goo coming out of their mouth and eyes. Oh, uh, and then at like, the end, weird. Resident Evil was more interesting because like y- you actually had scarce resources and they didn't come back. Yeah, it was so proper like, survival example, stuff. It <clears throat> it takes like between three and four bullets depending where you hit them to kill zombies and the zombies always like they always read like are in the same places like they can't move between areas like between doors so like you would go to an area and it's like right well I've got 15 bullets and I know to get from here to here there's three zombies so it's more about like once you play it a few times it's like picking the one that you know you need to kill and yeah then, like most of the time I just dodge around them because later on all like well, they added it in for the the newer version, the Crimson Heads, oh, where if you don't burn their bodies, <laughs> they, they come, come back. back. They come back and they have like big long claws and they move really quickly and they take way more ammo. So it's more about like clearing the areas that you know are the most important because you can't really do it with all of them without losing like health. See, there was a game that did like, but that whole kind of like replay to understand the game thing. I don't like that. I don't like that mechanic. Like, you know the way... Yeah, but I have no idea. Like, obviously Resident Evil doesn't do it that bad, but just because it's popped in my head, um, the worst contender for that was Dead Rising 2. Or just the Dead Rising series in general. But they do that yeah, it was all about replaying things over and over, and the time that you can do it all. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that either, but... I, I sort of like it when it's like, oh, replay to get new stuff. Like when you beat the game, you unlock a new costume or a new mode. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But I don't really like games where it's like, oh, yeah, you just have to fail and fail and fail and fail and then restart until you get it right. Yeah. Like in Resident Evil, you, you would In Resident Evil, you wouldn't fail. It would just mean you would, like, waste loads of bullets <laughs> and health. <laughs> oh, God! You know... Because like, like, there's these things called hunters, which are like these big reptilian creatures. Yeah. Are they with the tongues and stuff? <coughs> no, no or they're liquors. And they're in two, of course. Not one. <laughs> but no, they're, they're like big sort of like, they're like frogs with teeth or whatever. And uh, like if you've wasted all your shotgun ammo, it is so hard because those things can move. Oh, yeah. Actually, to be fair, it's probably not as bad now that they've got the proper controls in. Because with the tank controls, it was like, I'm running down the corridor, it's right behind me, and I just need to turn down the stairs. But I've missed it completely because it doesn't turn quick <laughs> enough. Yeah. I'm not, oh, no, it's like sitting down the back and I'm dead. Oh, I'm dead. But the, there was that other game um, that you're playing at the minute that I, I haven't played any of this game so a game. lot of my experience between two games now appears to be f- from over Michael's shoulder yeah, yeah. but uh, for me, yeah. um Prestige yeah that looks good it's a new indie game where you build siege engines but it looks like tabletop yeah. like models so it's just like a white plane with like a little castle with some grass around it and then 
when the may like the, you'll have like soldiers trying to attack you, and they like jump up and down like someone's moving them with their hand, yeah. type thing like bobbing up and down, and they just give you scenarios like the first one's like destroy a house, so what you need to do is put like four wheels and a battering ram on something and knock it over, and it gets more elaborate. So like later, I, the, my last one was you had to, you have to destroy like a monument on top of a hill, so I tried to build a flying machine with like cannons hanging off the yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's but it's very hard uh, once you get later on because. It seems to me you can get stuff pretty complex. Yeah. Like I, I built a I built a tank covered in saw blades and used it to kill and see, the whole battalion. Those stuff. are the never the those are never the type of games that I orig- would originally think, oh those are the kind of games I want to play. But when I see someone else playing them, I go, I know for a fact I can just lose hours upon yeah. hours playing that game. It's like um the games that you seem to be able to play at the longest are the ones that you can start boiling at some point down to your own creativity. Oh, I like, didn't know that game. That's full of that. Because you can build a catapult. Like, say you need to take out a big tower that's on a hill. You could make a catapult and try and fling things at it. You could build a flying machine to try and drop bombs on it. You could literally build a really tall battering ram and try and do it that way. It's covered in, like, saw blades, spikes, <laughs> bombs, fireballs, cannons, all kinds of stuff. You can cover it in armour so that there are, like, arrows and stuff that just bounce <laughs> off it. Yes. And then it's all based on like real physics. So if you build something that like too heavy, it's too heavy. Like I, I made one where it was just a huge platform with a single thin tower with a cannon on top. I mean, you fired the cannon. <laughs> the cannon just the whole thing swept and flew away. You, you can know? use that as a weapon. Fire the cannon in the opposite direction. Yeah. Fling the tower. Okay, castle. <laughs> it's a very good game though. Surprisingly uh, addictive. Though it, it's early access and therefore a little buggy. Yeah, but is it? It's only a fiver, isn't it? It's like insanely it's cheap. Five ninety nine. I I think that I reckon that game is gonna get really big though. Like I, it's like you know when Minecraft started off, not as big as Minecraft because Minecraft is like colossal. Big. Minecraft is a beast. Like, Minecraft is too big. Like it doesn't make sense how big that's got. <laughs> but like um, you know the way where can I start I remember because when Minecraft first started off people would uh, like I was on DeviantArt and people would have all these screen grabs of things and I was like what the f- like, what is this I don't understand this game and then in like a year's time everyone was like oh Minecraft woo Minecraft you know it exploded yeah. I reckon Prestige is probably going to do something like that like it's going to obviously you know it'll be it's probably not as big, but people are going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's a cool game. It's a lot and of then expand it. Yeah. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to have a medieval theme. Like, you could be building... Yeah, spaceships and stuff, yeah. Well, I don't know. There's a game called Space Engineers, which does a similar thing. Uh, but it's, it's quite fun, because everything performs in real time. And the, the, the standard level is there's two ships. Yeah. And you can just get a wall and just crash it into the other and cut Yeah, I was going to ask that. It's, <laughs> it's really good. Like, the, the blocks deform and everything, so they, they, like, they dent and then explode. That's pretty and sweet. Of, you know, it's quite long. Like, it's got a big engine block and then a big long sort of bridge and then the bridge. Yeah. And then the other ship's just a big fat thing and you can just crush it. straight <laughs> into the bridge yeah. and it's like, no! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> and they float up. See, that's what I want. I want to be able to kind of like, when I play like those type of games, if I can't drive my ship straight into something yeah. and cause horrendous damage to everyone. <laughs> like, if I can't do, like, a last-ditch, like, kamikaze thing, yeah. like, I'm doing it, I'm going in. And it's like that scene from Independence Day yeah. where it's, like, the guy's, like, ran out of missiles and he has nothing left. And he's all like, I'm back. And he flies straight into the ship. If I can't do that in a game, then I don't want to play that game. I never want to touch that game. Because yeah, there's games... Um, what did that... Um, Sid Meier's Pirates... Like, this is, like, going way back 2004. Yeah. This shows you how recent games I've played. <laughs> but in that, you could, like, sail around and you would shoot dudes. But as soon as you crashed into them, it went... Uh, it wasn't just, like, bump and that was it. You you boarded their ship. And then you would, like... It was just... It, it was kind of, like, crappy quick time events and stuff. But it was still... It was the fact that you could literally, at the start of a thing, you could, like, not shoot anyone and just go, screw it and sail straight into them and crash into their ship. And then obviously you'd have way too, you'd get overpowered, you'd essentially get massacred. But it was like, it's just the fact that I have that option to be so... To be completely reckless and stupid. Yeah, <laughs> to be, if, if, if a game essentially is kind of like, not smart enough to let me be an yeah. idiot, then I don't want to play it. That's why I'm loving Far Cry 4 right now. Cause like you can get to an outpost and you can sneak in and kill everyone. Or you can ride an elephant, yeah. <laughs> like with a rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I spent a lot of time on the elephant bag hunting leopards with a bow and that. Yes. I did that, but I was hunting leopards with an RPG. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> no you hunting. don't get to wear skins, though, then. I know, but it's so fun. <laughs> or, like, going around on a quad bike with, you know, the, the, the arm grenade launcher, the one that goes, like, thunk. Oh, I yeah, just like shot, and, like I shot a tape here with it, and it just like somersaulted through the air. Like, <laughs> ran, like yeah. me. it's just so stupid. There was a, a brilliant video I saw on Facebook yesterday of someone was playing GTA Five, and you know the way they were trying to get into the uh, airport. Yeah, they thrown like C four right next to a gate, so it was kind of like you know a smaller gate and then a bigger gate. So it was like the f- main fence and essentially a doorway, and they blew up the C four, and nothing happened. They walked over to it, and then instantly the entire <laughs> fence, like around the gate. Just fell over and it was just this doorway <laughs> left standing, and I was like, such comedy devil. <laughs> just games like that are great for that though. Like, yeah, just oh, messing about. I'm very excited for the PC version of that because they'll have the well, hopefully they'll have the heist in, being that it's been mm. over. Is it over a year now? Definitely, yeah. Since it's they originally released it, yeah. Then when did it come out? September. It was like September October time. I think it was September. Okay, well, yeah, got some year anyway, right? Yeah. That's also the no, worst time to release that yeah. game because everyone, like uh, most well, of the people they, playing they, that. They could release it at any time of the year and it will sell everything. Yeah. But that's like September, that's October, or kind of like the, the like September, October, November are like the biggest months for releasing games. Really. I know, but like... And that's what I like, think just, like GTA, don't need to worry about that. Yeah. What's the time everyone goes back to school? <laughs> You're damaging people's <laughs> education. And then there's... <laughs> Jack Thompson is right. <laughs> and there's notoriously little games released over Christmas and in the summer. It's like when you're off... There's nothing to yeah. play. But see, as soon as you're back into school or something. I've always figured is what they do is they, like I've noticed with games is they'll release it, like October for me is always the best time to release a game because it's just close enough to Christmas that you can sell copies and then have your big boom Christmas go through the roof kind of boost. Yeah. But you have, you can have time where people can play it. So you can have people play it and start posting videos online so other people see it and go, ah, oh, they're playing GTA, ah, oh, that looks so good. Man, I really want to get that for Christmas. Or they kind of have like the whole time where like they can build up a like enough of a community that when tons of people buy it on Christmas Day or whatever, yeah, there's a foundation there for them to build up of. Well, it's, it's people hear how good a game is from their friends, and then the bundle comes out at Christmas where it's like, oh yeah, you can get it for yeah. half the price your friends bought it for. It's like yes. Well, what's the best game you've ever gotten at Christmas? I'd say. Team Racing. Oh, wait, you that's, remember that's a contender. Was? Yeah, it was my very first PlayStation game, and it's probably the one I played the most out of any of them. Because I, it was like it was just a case of like me and all my friends as children. Yeah, it's like, a, like, all the kids <laughs> in the street, and we just sat and played like got a multi tab. You know, oh, playing four player battles and stuff. It was so good. My first PlayStation game was Bubsy Three. I Bubsy Three D. Bubsy Three Bubsy. You ever played Bubsy the Bobcat on the Sega Mega Drive? What color was he? Was he blue? No, he's like yellow. I have a vague and memory of yellow. Yellow. <laughs> yeah. He was yellow. a yellow belly. Yeah. Yellow belly. And he had a white t shirt with an exclamation mark on it. Bubsy. And Bubsy 3D's kind of well regarded as one of the worst games of all time. Yeah, I was about and to say. That's the game I got for Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, son. Here you go. Here's Bubsy. Bubsy. Yes. I'm pretty sure yeah, my, my younger brother got Spyro, my older brother got Melgar Solid, and I got Bubsy. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. That is brutal. Yeah. I think the first game I ever got was Crash 2 because I distinctly remember there was like a bit where my sister, we had it set up in our, like our kitchen and my sister was fighting Tiny and she couldn't beat him. So I had to go stand outside the room because it was too much pressure for my sister to try and beat Tiny while I was watching. And so I'd be peeking around the corner watching these like this fight. Is that the one where it's like a gladiator arena? No, no, that's three, three, that's three. Two is like, for some reason, two is the first introduction of Tiny, and it's like in space, and you're like, you have to, you're on these platforms, and then Tiny would jump on a platform, and that would cause the platforms around it to collapse, so you'd have to move out of the way, and then he'd do this big thing, and he'd get stuck, and then that thing would fall with him on it, and stuff. Yeah, I remember that. I miss those old type of games, but you couldn't play them nowadays, because they're too simple. Yeah. Like old yeah. fat, like proper, like, because there's 3D platformers now have kind of like evolved into like Arkham Asylum and like Assassin's Creed and stuff. You don't get like, like the, the, there was an indie game that was coming out that was doing something like that, Hat in Time. And now it's like a 3D, 
exploration platformer thing, and it looks really good. It's all like cell shaded and stuff, but it's like never has there been a game like that in years because it's just for some reason people have stopped making them. Yeah, I, I really can't think of one at all. There's plenty of side scrolling platforming games, yeah. but like a fully 3D one. Can't remember the last See, one. See, it's sort of in that place where it's probably it's just too expensive for an indie to do it. And it's just not worth a triple A. Yeah, yeah. It's only, yeah. They should at least do like a Crash Bandicoot or a Spiral Repack. Like the three mm. the first three games remastered or something. I can tell you things. Like, yeah. I'd bet, like Crash Bandicoot. If you made it look HD, I reckon I would play. Would you remember? Fine, like, do you know what Crash looks like in the uh, Cry Engine? No, it's not in the park. Is that that? Yeah, no. I don't like that at all. It's really weird because it looks like this weird hunchback thing, but its face. It's like its mouth is in his <laughs> stomach. <laughs> it's just like, oh, and what it runs, it runs really weird because for some reason, like the the arms, oh, it's yeah, it's so dimensional. It just reminds me of like have you ever seen any of those? It's like pictures of someone trying to paint what Mario would look like if he lived. It was in real life. And he's like this <laughs> obese man, hairy man, with neck and stuff. It's just like oh, uh, it's, it's no like, one should have drawn that. Like, like, he's got these like huge eyes that are just like. Oh, it looks like he hasn't slept in years. And he's, like, ah. <laughs> he's like fat but built at the yeah. same time. He's like, I'm gonna crush me some goombas. And he's just like, <laughs> and then Yoshi's just like a straight up velociraptor. Yeah, and it's just like, like ah. I forgot what my original question was. Oh, yeah, because I was gonna say, yeah, best game you got Christmas. No, I said that. Did you? Well, he, he said, yeah, he said yeah, Crash Team Racing, racing. Like, and that's where we got sidetracked. Did you never said what yours was? I'd probably say it was The Elder Scrolls Oblivion. Because that was when yeah, I, that's a good choice. Cause I got my Xbox 360 and got that with it. Then. Yeah, that's actually, yeah, yeah that's a really good choice. Yeah. But then when I first got my GameCube, I got it with Smash Bros. Melee, Mario Sunshine, Pikmin and Luigi's <sighs> Mansion. That's yeah. pretty good. But that's, that's, so good. that's a good one. Yeah. That's that essentially all the good games that came out for the GameCube, yeah. though. <laughs> <laughs> Just add Metroid Prime and the Wind Waker to that and you've got everything. Because yeah. there's such a fan base, like Nintendo and GameCubes and stuff, I always come back to it. And I like because I still have a GameCube. And I yeah. bought a Wii like last year. And I, in my head, I was like, this is such a good idea. And I don't watch, or sorry, I don't play any games on it. I only watch Netflix on the Wii. And I felt like it was such like a bad buy. I don't know why. Well, if, I you're did not, it. if you're not hardcore in the Nintendo games, there's no good reason to buy it. Yeah. But like, see, everything that Nintendo makes is class. But if you don't like Mario or Zelda or Smash Bros. or you know, Mario Kart or whatever, there's not. Yeah, it's just gonna You may there. as well have bought another console because the ports, the third party ports are bad. Yeah, oh, they're so bad. If they yeah. exist at all. Yeah. So. That's, I wish Nintendo would go third party. Basically, because I want a Mario game on the Xbox. Well, it's, it's, it's <laughs> just, no, but it's just because the system's not on power. Yeah. That would be a massive pain to. And saying that, though, the new Mario Kart was amazing. And the new Smash Brothers is great. And Ben Eta, too. It's fantastic. Yeah, like yeah. I wouldn't buy the Wii U just for them, but they're very good games. Is the Wii U backwards game. compatible? I don't think so. No, no, but so. You, you could download like. So you couldn't buy like the first like Mario Galaxy or whatever. No, you can you can download games onto it. Like they, the, well, they did the Wind Waker remaster, but you can get all games on it as well. But that's I'd totally, use... totally buy a Wii U if I could get all the really good Wii games as well. Yeah, yeah. Because you would be able to get them dirt cheap now. Like it'd be what, like hundred and thirty quid for a Wii U or something. It's not that expensive. It's... Oh, I, I thought you meant like a Wii, and it's like holy. I got mine for a bargain then if you yeah, thought it was under 30 quid. We use are super cheap. Yeah, you can buy all those games. Easy. Like nope. 300 quid and you can get hours of entertainment. That's the problem. Like Nintendo have the virtual store but they have barely anything on it. That you can get yeah. like Super Nintendo games and N64 games and all to play on your Wii and GameCube games. But so they don't like, sell digital versions of like newer stuff? It's just like they, the digital selection is kind of ridiculous. Like they have stuff you've never heard of. They have like some baseball game or like a basketball game, but they wouldn't have like all the money. Michael Jordan, <laughs> yeah, basketball yeah, for the Wii. Like, they first like they've never like, like, game, any... like Game Boy Advance games. They wouldn't they like they wouldn't have any of the Mario games or any Pokemon games or mm. anything like that. Uh, they just, don't seem to understand how the internet works. Like, they really don't. But but it's because Nintendo thing is like Nintendo is kind of because it, Nintendo's not really good at sharing kind of with other people. It's very kind of like exclusive thing, to its yeah. thing. So that's why Nintendo's consoles are only good for Nintendo games and if they would just learn to kind of open up a little bit so, see Nintendo it's not open up it's because it's because they're doing something different like the Wii was never going like the ports were never going to be as good because you've got like 
they didn't have a proper controller initially when it came out. Yeah. And it was all motion control, which makes it incompatible with like most games. Like imagine playing like well, okay, now I'm imagining playing Skyrim with a Wii mode and that'd be pretty cool if it was. <laughs> I used to But you know, you get my point, like no one like yeah, they, they yeah, were yeah. never gonna make that. And then the Wii U, yes, they've made a controller and it's better in HD, but it's still it's not as powerful as the other ones. But th- that's what and I mean. And I think maybe if you made them if they stepped in line with everyone else, would their what makes them tell oh, yeah, suffer or something? See, I don't know. See, I think it's more it's cause like because they design everything literally kind of just for their own stuff. Like you'll never get like imagine like if you had Zelda and stuff on like the Xbox or like the PlayStation do you think it would do better? Or do you think it would do worse? But would they be as good without those technical limitations? Because like, what makes all those games really good is that they're super, like, they're tight and they look good within the constraints of what they are. Like, do you, do you want a realistic looking set of them? No! Oh, no, 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 no. no. But, it's, have, have you, have but you... I think maybe if they had, the, the, they would feel the pressure to maybe do that. Mm. Damn it. Like, it'd be weird if you had all, like, the, I don't know. Like it's like Mario's taking the mushrooms and he's like, you know, you can see him eating the pie. <laughs> just like, yeah. like, like the drool coming out of his, his mouth. You know, yeah. Well, if, have, have you played the new Mario Kart? Or seen it in action? I, I've seen it playing. Like I've it, never played it. I've like heard it, it exists. It's in Cap- <laughs> Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. Both look incredible. Like Nintendo are really good at doing lighting and stuff. Now that they oh, have yeah. that infrastructure. So I would say uh, like Zelda with the extra power would look like a Zelda game but just a lot better I don't think they would go because realistic because well, it was like when like if they keep it like stylized and stuff like when Ratchet and Clank came to PS3 the cutscenes for that looked like Pixar movies but it's like because Ratchet and Clank looked really really good on PS3 but if they were to start making like Zelda and Mario and stuff not exclusives I think they would start pulling in like a lot more revenue and uh, it, it's just you, you say that and yet the Wii was what was it like 150 million units or something and or 3DS like as far as handhelds go Nintendo, there is Nintendo. The 3DS. oh yeah yeah but, but, like, but, but they also milk that so much in the sense that they like they like I, I bought a DS kind of like I like wanna I, I'm not sure which generation of DS I have but it's essentially it is now completely useless and I only bought it like maybe five years ago it's now Absolute. Obsolete. Obsolete, not absolute. Absolute, absolute. absolute. absolute the vodka. What's well, so now you want a 10 year life cycle? Like, well, it, 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 it's more they kind of like, they tend to do this thing where it's like every time they, they, I don't know, they just strike me as like someone because they're like an old man just holding on to what they have, not willing to change kind of thing. That was something that came out about Nintendo quite recently that apparently because their management structure is all old Japanese businessmen. They're really closed off to anything new, so they yeah, don't, they don't want to change policies whether they work or not. They, and it's kind of like the size, well, the size. I'm surely that some of the issue if what they're doing stops working. Yeah. And while you may say, but it's they're it's, obviously not as successful as the Wii, but like, but like what console had like you know the PS Two was amazing and PS Three was not, the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty was amazing, Xbox One's doing okay, but it's not. Yeah. So like. It's very rare for a console to just like set the world on fire twice in a row. But the, that's the like Nintendo, Sony, and Microsoft are so big that they would have to be doing things wrong for a long time before it became to the point where they're like, right, we need yeah. to change something. Yeah, yeah. like they, they probably know they're already cooking up their HD console that's even more powerful than the, than <laughs> the PlayStation or Xbox. I would, I would love, I would, yeah. I would love for the next console everyone gets to be a new Nintendo one that they're just like they just come yeah. out with something that blows your mind. It just like, it just projects holograms yes. into your bedroom and you can play in the game like, like it's yeah. sensing your <laughs> But more likely it's yeah. going to be like more amiibos or something yeah. but no but that, that, as far as kids market goes like that oh, Skylanders yeah, 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 yeah. and Amiibos and that I, I, Disney Infinity stuff that does really I like, love yeah. the marketing idea behind that I think it's so good it's like buy a toy and put, put, get it as a toy but also get it, it as a thing it is in the a game good idea. as like yeah. that's so good like I love that like normally kind of like marketing products I'm like but that one I'm like that's so smart like the guy who <laughs> thought of that every they should hire someone to go into the office every day where he works, pat him on the back and go, <laughs> nice job. Nice job. And get, then like, give him a treat. Well, they yeah, probably, right. probably do that before. Maybe just by 
showering him in money. money. It's like, ah. I know, but it, it feels like it's not enough. Like he needs, <laughs> or they need to pay people, random people on the street, to come up to him and just give him compliments all the time. So he never knows. He'll never ever know. Pay pay Morgan Freeman to narrate his life. <laughs> yeah, no, no better reward. That would be good. And Gary decided he would have an apple. I can't, I'm not going to be boring. That was kind of like Bane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, well, what would you prefer, Morgan Freeman? If, like marrying your boss like if Bane? Bane? If Bane and Sean Connery had a baby. But Sean Connery is Bane. Or Bane is Sean Connery. He's kind of like voice. English really Sean Connery, that's a Darth Vader. Yeah. Apparently it's supposed to be a bit of Jamaican as well. Cause Didn't get that at all. Yeah. Because yeah. like Bane's dad is Jamaican. And stuff in the comics. That's crazy. Is he Jamaican? Yeah, I swear. Well, in, in the comics. Like, I thought he was, like, was, he I thought he was like Spanish or something. He's, or he's from like... South American? He's from Maybe South American. He, he is like South American. He's from like a weird South American village or something. But because I... I think, yeah, it's like a fictional prison and a fictional South American Yeah, prison. yeah. But I remember there was like in the... Like in, in interviews and stuff, Tom Hardy was saying, oh, I tried to keep it. <laughs> like... Jamaican and it's like what? Oh yeah, the Ca- Caribbean Republic of Santa Prisca. Yeah, okay, see. Same. Hey, the Caribbean's near South America. So yeah, I suppose. <laughs> but you know what also is near the Caribbean? <laughs> Jamaica. Jamaican me crazy. <laughs> Jamaican me crazy. Okay, so what else have we actually played in the last decade? Uh, <laughs> uh, the Fall. The Fall. I played recently and it's very good. Uh, it's again like well, it's a modern adventure type game. It's three two and a half D, so three D but from a two D side scrolling perspective. Yeah. You play as the AI on a combat suit that has fallen from the sky. Oh yeah, you were telling me about this. And uh, it's really good because it's basically you 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 well, I don't know you initialize you wake up because you're not a living thing, but like the suit yeah. turns on and it's like I am A R I D like arrows. And I am supposed to be protecting my user, and then it's like you, your the internal systems are damaged, so you, you can't tell. Like basically, you're assuming that the person inside you is dying because they are obviously not in control. Yeah. So you want to save them, and then you're going around this weird place that like seems to be like it like scraps robots or something, or it repurposes robots, and you meet other robots. And I don't know the dialogue's very well done because they have this sort of like there's one guy who's like he's he's the administrator of the of the place you are. And he's like seems to have been alone for a very like it's all all the humans have abandoned this place, so the the robots have been sort of going crazy because the no one's been resetting their AIs or anything, so like they've developed personalities and this one he like, he wants to tell you something but his automatic response kicks in before he can respond properly, mm-hmm. so it'd be like where do you want to go and then it'd be like you have to go to here or like blah 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 and then he goes oh sorry about that I can't stop it yeah and then actually it's, it's, it's quite <laughs> interesting it's really so good. then it's all about you have no access to your own systems because they're supposed to be turned on by the user and because the user's unconscious he can't do it so you and the only way to break that is to put yourself in danger so for example you have a gun but the gun doesn't work because you don't have a power cell but even if it did you aren't allowed to shoot it because you're not all the yeah. So you have to put yourself in a situation where you, if not shooting it, will kill the user, and so it unlocks, and then you can use it. So it's about you sort of like going around oh, breaking, that, yeah, that's breaking your core sense. programming. So you have like a shield, and you can turn invisible, but none of this is unlocked until you f- you're put in situations that force you to do it. That's pretty it's a very interesting. Yeah, story. that's actually really, really cool. cool. And it's it's actually it's, it's the first part of it. So like it ends on a cliffhanger, and then so it's like to be continued. Oh, oh, is it less? So is it- like chapters well, it, is it, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't pitch that up front which is the thing like, yeah, it doesn't say, it's, like I because it was a I think it, it was Kickstarter early access or something like it's in, in, in self funded anyway but I would highly recommend because yeah, it's it's only like seven quid I played it's like four or five hours long it needs to have like a robot at some point that finds out that you have a human inside you and because they were abandoned it hates humans now and it wants to kill the human Wants to kill the human in the suit. <laughs> and that was so good. It's, it's very good. I really enjoyed it. I've been playing Life is Strange. Is that any good? It looks weird. It isn't, isn't. Your the central kind of core gameplay mechanic is you can rewind time back about twenty seconds to like twenty seconds to a minute, it just depends on the situation. But you just suddenly have this time travel power and then you're in this town and you're a teenage girl that goes to college and it's all really like it kind of feels like The Walking Dead mixed with like Gone Home mixed with just like 
teenage angst. <laughs> and the, like, so the, the, the dialogue is, is really bad and it's kind of really like, the character is just like, oh, my life sucks, but for no apparent reason because their life's perfectly fine. You know, there, there's, like a, there's like a dead girl and she's looking at all the posters of the dead girl being like, oh my God, someone really wants to find her. This is so annoying. And it's like, well, you know, she has gone missing. Like, <laughs> people do get worried. <laughs> But the actual like way the time travel works is cool because you can if you have a conversation and it would always say your your answer that it just says that action will have consequences and then you can kind of go did I say the right thing and rewind and say something else and oh, it would say so you could actually yeah. yeah that's quite cool so it's like the way in The Walking Dead you make a decision that it's a bad one and you you feel guilty about it and you have a different kind of guilt where you're like you can make any decision you want so which one is the better one you have like that is agency it obvious which one's better or not? it never is like it's it's does see, it see really that's cool because well. I always hate it. And like you play, like you play The Walking Dead, and you go, okay, that's what happened, and I want to know what happens, but I'm obviously could not be bothered spending another, yeah, like, yeah. You know, four or five hours yeah. working my way through it again. And so that, that I like that. In a game like The Walking Dead, in my head, what I do is my story, and I would never want to replay yeah, it to see yeah. what else happens. Yeah, but you see, I, I, guess, I, I like yeah. that. I like that. But yeah. then again, I want, I want to know what happens if I'm a dickhead or yeah. if I see. I would get really, shot that person or whatever. I'd get really paranoid because it was the thing was uh, like when I started. I've noticed that I'm quite indecisive. If I think somehow later in the game I'm go- not gonna have a good outcome, so I would get like rewind it, and then I would probably get like. I don't know, like a certain bit into the next thing, and be like, no, no, that's the wrong yeah, one. Fun. Rewind so, it again. So you can't. You wouldn't be like say you finish a conversation and move on. You can't go back to it, can you? It's if if you say like if you're like in the hallway talking to someone and then you go out into the courtyard, you can't go back into the hallway to rewind or repeat it. It's kind of like yeah. in segments when oh, you okay. when you rewind. Okay, well, you see, so, like, it's, so it's area based. It's kind of like it, from where you are. It kind of is sort of, like you can oh, you can sort of free room, but it's like you would go into like a hallway and you can go into rooms. But when you leave the hallway, like it's like go outside. When you go outside, you can't go back. But the good thing about it is there's no time limit on your decisions. So whether it's The Walking Dead makes you like make a twitch decision and then you yeah. feel guilty, but you're like, oh, I, I, I panicked. Yeah. This is like, you have, <laughs> you have as long as you want to to consider how badly you've just messed up. <laughs> and it's really okay, interesting. Well, so it's like but, real life. But it works really well in the same way because The Walking Dead had an element of like where if you made a decision, either decision was a bad one and either way someone would die. So there's that idea that, you know, even if you make the right choice, like it might not have a good outcome. And it has that element where, like, you you tell a principal that someone in your class has a gun, and though he like asks you like why are you so suspicious, if you say someone has a gun, he doesn't believe you and like says you know this is a very serious allegation. I'm gonna have to like tell your parents. And if you if you lie to him, he doesn't believe you. And says the same thing, but it's like the nature of the lie. You know, did you lie? You lied about a student having a gun, or you were just like you wouldn't tell him the truth. Which one is the worst decision? Kind of thing. Oh, so it's like the lesser of two yeah, evils. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. You can imagine, like, if if you let, if you didn't talk about, if you did talk about the gun, then it might come back to bite you because it's like I heard you told the principal about my gun. That's because oh, yeah, the, yeah. the guy, so, the guy with the gun. The whole thing is you're at Blackwell Academy. The guy is like Jordan Blackwell or whatever. His family own the school, and the principal won't do anything against him. Oh, right. So he he's running around with a gun because he can. <laughs> you, <laughs> you can actually see, see like, like the, the, the thuds spiking. Yeah. Do you remember like last week when the pal driver was out there? Um, like you could actually just see like the boom 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 boom. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounded like Jurassic Park. Didn't it? Yeah, it really did. Really, really slow. T-rex. They're making Jurassic Park Lego video game. Oh, it's and you can so play cool. as the dinosaurs. Yeah. Could you build your own? Like Jurassic. It'd be like, it'd be like Jurassic Park. So you weren't cooked up. <laughs> it's like, what <laughs> do you think that would do? I would build my own dinosaur. A Lego. Lego. That would be pretty Lego. sweet. Actually. Dinosaur soup. Yeah. The the the, tr- the new trailer the trailer that came out for the Super Bowl for Jurassic Park or Jurassic World sorry has actually got me excited for it now. Yeah, yeah. I'm oh, excited. Right. He does have trains. I'm I'm, ex- I'm excited because because Chris Pratt's in it basically. I'm as far as I'm concerned. It'd be interesting he can't do anything if he can wrong. actually pull off something a little more serious because yeah. he's only been proven on like uh, goofy comedy types. Yeah. You know. He was good in in Zero Dark Thirty though. Mm-hmm. He was serious. Was he, he was yeah. in Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, he was one of the the guys in the squad that captured Bin Laden. What? Yeah, which was pretty, I never pretty watched bizarre. It's, it's just a proper guy. You're like really. complete surprise. It's, it's, was was he in that? Even though you haven't seen it's it. It's surprisingly <laughs> crap for a film that won like Academy Awards and like. No, but it won Academy Awards because it was a propaganda film. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. American Sniper. What? Yeah. I really liked both of them, but really not, not because they were propaganda films. I thought they were just good at like not being propaganda films. Have either of you seen American Sniper? Yes. 
you know at the bit at the end where he like walks in with the gun like with his wife and he's kind of messing around and he's like like put them up put them up and oh yeah, yeah, yeah and he leaves the gun on the shelf I thought that was like instead of you kind of being like oh yeah you know America like you're allowed guns in your house I think you were supposed to kind of be like this guy ki- like killed 170 people in Iraq and he's walking around the house with a, gu- a loaded gun pointing at his wife and he's obviously mentally unstable because of the war and it's like this is the guy standing here pointing a gun at his yeah, wife. Yeah, no, I, yeah, I, like, I was, I've petrified I was, it was actually yeah, going to I, I gonna thought gonna he was off. like, is he going to shoot his wife? And like walking in front of his kids with a gun and then just setting it like on the shelf where the child could reach it if they climbed on a chair and then teaching his son to hunt and stuff. I thought instead of being like, you know, well, yeah, America, yeah, it was kind of like, yeah, well, no, this, yeah, this is wrong. I did read a thing about how like, he was, it was like, he, that's, that was kind of the aim of the film, just loads of people missed the point. Yeah. But the thing is, it's just when I see all the comments on Twitter and stuff of like, People just saying the worst things. Yeah. Like, oh, I would have shoot Arabs after saying that and stuff. It was just like, you are terrible people. And that was because your existence alone, yeah. in this film should not be released because you're an idiot. Because you don't understand what the film is. Yeah. 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 Uh, but it's like, angry. but then that boils down to is like, it obviously it, uh, things will always be people's kind of like um, interpretation to it. But then should the film have been more clear and stuff? But it's good. Uh, because people will like this stuff like if you look back to like um, like a, a lot of uh, oh what's the film Air Force One that is so heavily well, it's American it's over the top though it's it's the president I, f- I feel of like the United States but, but, and <laughs> Gary Oldman doing the most over the top <laughs> yeah. Russian accent I've ever heard in my life like it's almost cartoonish. But so I can get behind it because it's silly. But the thing is, to us, we look at that and we're like, "Oh, this cringe where this is so bad." Americans see that and go, "Well, I'm I assuming." Know. Well, I, I, I would say someone, I guess. a majority because obviously because it was a box office hit. Some people, it's like people we we look at, um, you know, like the way that you said there with the guy with the gun. I yeah. thought that was quite like you know you were like holy shit, and I was like, "Oh God, he's actually going to shoot." Yeah, people gun fanatics in America would probably see that and be like yeah that's yeah, that's just something you do yeah. so it, it boils down to kind of like maybe to America that wasn't a propaganda film but yeah. to the rest of the world we're like clearly this is too propaganda yeah but I, I think American snipers clever like that because Americans well people like who like that kind of stuff I'm not going to generalize just Americans they'll watch it and be like yeah you know that's that's how it happens that's how it should be and then anyone who doesn't like it will see it the other way. And either way, you think it's a good film. Yeah. It like yeah. kicks both boxes. I just find I actually I just find it quite dull. Like at, at, after like his third or fourth t- tour. It kind of when it came up when it said like, like it's his fourth tour, I was like really again. Come yeah, on. <laughs> I, I I I got bored after, and it, it's literally kind of like the last, the very last kind of like bit that I walked out, and I was like, because like everyone walked when the film ended, everyone walked out in silence. Like no one was like chatting out of this, when we walked out of it in the cinema. No one was talking, and I was like, "That's a pretty good ending for that film." Yeah. But it was just like the start is good, and I think Bradley Cooper is really good as that character. He's amazing in it. But it's just like there's just certain bits in that that just got so dull. The bit with like the the sniper that he was facing off against was so stupid. Yeah. It turned it into like a. Have you, you haven't seen it? Have you? I know of the. Well, that guy didn't exist in real life. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's like, oh, well, he's a sniper, so there has to be another sniper that's his yeah, enemy, yeah, yeah. and the film can't be over till he beats his enemy. It's like, you copy enemy of the gates, yeah. which is the best sniper. <laughs> yeah, the, oh, fuck, that's exactly. a really good film. Like, you didn't need to have that guy there to be like the enemy, and even like the the guy, the butcher. You, you don't need that. Like, yeah, you don't need someone. To be and like, the butcher's oh, totally, he's the bad guy. <laughs> butcher apparently is totally fictional, but the thing that bugs me a lot about that was they built the butcher up to be this big bad guy and I was like I want to see you get messed up and then he, I don't want to spoil it but it's kind of like does he shoot him? <laughs> does he <laughs> snipe <laughs> him? does the American <laughs> snipe him? but it, it, it's just I don't know because they, they build him off to be such a bad guy and then it's kind of his, his his ending is lackluster in my opinion yeah it was kind of just disappeared yeah it's, it's like, kind of like, it's like they hope you forget that Butcher was in it and it's like no because I literally because the scene like there's really it's like, remember that guy that killed the small child with the drill yeah just, like, just forget, yeah, about yeah, him. forget about him He's, you're not going to see him why yeah. does he kill a small child with the drill that's his thing that's his, his thing his is drill. he drills his people weapon, weapon of choice kind of thing ah. which is really stupid as well it's like let's make this guy completely unlikable 
Yeah, like, oh, yeah, we don't need this in this film. We just can't defeat the point of the film. But that's what bugs me is like if you if you're gonna build a character up for people to hate, don't just throw him away. Yeah. Because now I, I my rage is invested in this character. <laughs> I want I want us I want him to get his comeuppance. Nope. No, that's to get you to buy the director's cut Blu ray, though. <laughs> yeah, there'll, there'll be a scene where he dies and you're like, it doesn't happen. And then there'll be the 10th anniversary re release and you'll be like a oh, husk of a man, <laughs> an alcoholic, drug addict, just being like, I need to see the butcher get his come up and say, I gotta get my fix, man. <laughs> We're going on with this rage. Any other games? Um, I played that Far Sky one. It's kind of like Minecraft. Yeah, mixed yeah, with Bioshock. Minecraft. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's cool. It's, it's good. Super strange. Yeah, it's. The basic way it starts off is you're like in a submarine for some reason and the submarine breaks up so you're trapped underwater. In <laughs> like it explodes. Yeah. Or... I love how it's like you're trapped underwater. <laughs> uh, I could swim up. Yeah. No, apparently you're too deep. Oh, it's you, the band. You, you, no, you have to rebuild your submarine. You're only about 100 meters down. So you, you can see like the sunlight from the surface. You're not that deep. So realistically, you could yeah, swim to the surface. But... And you're in contact with someone, you could obviously get an awesome submarine to come help you. <laughs> but the whole thing is, you have to find the pieces of your submarine and rebuild it. So your but submarine mom, broke into nine pieces. I'm, I'm stuck under the I'm ocean. Like, so like, well, you better I rebuild that boat shatters, of yours. Um, yeah, it shatters into nine pieces. And then the woman on the intercom is like, okay, there's an abandoned base nearby. So you go into this underwater base where it's like, like a ladder. You climb up and it's like an air pocket and it has a cupboard and potatoes growing upstairs in it and stuff. <laughs> uh, so One like, thing a growing uh, boy needs. And then you can go out side and then you mine resources to get better armor like with you have a drill for an arm is cthulhu really no but there's krakens in it what yeah it's actually it's really cool because there's like great white sharks and hammerheads and barracudas and krakens and whales and like dolphins swimming about everywhere do you, dolphins do you, you? no <laughs> But they, they're just kind of like dicks. They like laugh at you from afar. They're like, <laughs> you can actually hear them coming from a distance. You just hear like, <laughs> and you look up and they're just like swimming past. But 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 is, is, is it actually krakens or is it giant squids? Because krakens is like the fictional monster they're, that pulls down like ships. They're giant squids, but they they call them krakens. Krakens, yeah, mm. oh, shit. Yeah, they they better be huge. It's I, it's it's cool because then you when you build a better diving suit, you can go deeper. So you go down so deep that it's like pitch black, and there's giant squids and angler oh, fish, and like cool. it's oh, like yeah. kind of like glowing like coral and volcanic vents and stuff. See, the ocean has always been something that kind of creeps me a little that's, bit. It's it's really atmospheric in that way because even it says it's like unknown. it says like don't go out at night because that's when like they say that's when the animals hunt. Which uh, seems, seems stupid like underwater, but basically. If you get too close to a shark or a shark spots you, or the worst thing is if you get cut and you bleed, sharks will swarm to you. Uh, but this at, actually at, at night, weird, everything man. is actively out to kill you, so a barracuda will swim past it. What weapons can you get? You can get Do you like a, an underwater bow or something. <laughs> <laughs> you get a <laughs> bow goes and it just slowly like floats down. It's like shit, yeah, one foot away from you. I didn't think yeah. this through. Well, you, 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 your drill isn't a weapon. You can't use it as a weapon, which is pretty stupid. But you, you can make a knife. Clearly, people who never watched American Sniper, it's totally a weapon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bioshock, even. Yeah, fuck yeah. Yeah, like you can swing a knife to oh, kill okay. things, which is, you can get, which is physically your impossible. Like a big daddy suit. In, that would be awesome. in the little like picture where you like equip armor, it's, it's almost like, it looks like Minecraft, and the inventory is exactly like Minecraft. Okay. And it looks like a big daddy suit, like it's a classic diving suit. You can make, you make like a like a harpoon gun and you can shoot like electric harpoons and stuff to kill enemies <laughs> and it's really cool it does make like a nice like noise oh, that's and it boosts bubbles and stuff and it, it looks it looks really nice like it's really atmospheric and the music's really cool and it's really creepy like you said like the sea is just a scary place yeah to be. B- because it's the whole thing it's like you could be like in kind of like floating or whatever and there could be something beneath you it's yeah. like all around you you could be attacked from it's like but like Scary games on land are bad enough. Yeah, but it's like now I have another dimension. That's beneath it's me. Like, <laughs> below, below I'm you not prepared. And like, that does happen. Like a sh- you'll look up and there'll just be a hammerhead swimming right over the top of you, and you'll be like, oh, "Don't!" You'll just like stop and be like, "Don't, don't do it. Don't come after me. Don't come after me." The, there was that um, what's that game where it's like a, it's like Left for Dead, but with like divers and like sharks. Oh yeah, I right. actually meant to check. Is that. it right? Get wrecked, mate. Get wrecked. Yo! Yeah, it's, it's like you're, you, you. Yeah, you have like four people with guns. Yeah, it's. Time. it's they're it's, trying to drill for treasure or something, and then there's like shark. Yeah. So it's like four people as, as divers, and then two Ooh, people as sharks. And I saw. I saw. <laughs> kind of nowhere. <laughs> I saw kind of like. Um, just people like walk through something, and I was like, this looks 
so good, but so scared to say. Yeah, time. I think that they updated it recently. They put like a magnet on it, so like uh, if you get a certain amount of kills, you get like this. It's like a super bar or something. So then you turn it on. Kill streak. Yeah. Or Megalodon is online. <laughs> uh, the unkillable prehistoric beast. I'm hoping I'm gonna come across something like that in this game. If you go deep enough, that it'll just be something oh, yeah, stupid, it, it, like it, a giant squid or just a stupid shark or some sort. It needs yeah. Cthulhu. Just yeah. the was like the like way. No through. Pacific yeah. Rim monster. <laughs> yes. You just find a portal. It's like, like what? A little, little <laughs> ground. What's that? I believe that game Eldritch has Cthulhu in it. Yeah, so and it's all blocking stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's really good and it's really scary. No, no, it's just one. Well, there's there's one big Cthulhu, but then he has like little babies called Starspawn, and Eldritch has Starspawn in it. Do you go crazy if you look at Cthulhu? He's. I don't know if Cthulhu himself's in the game, but oh, like, yeah, little, like the baby ones, and it's so funny because they're they're asleep everywhere, just like snoring, like little, <laughs> like, like snot bubbles and stuff, and then if you wake them up, they just like go mad and they're ridiculously powerful and they just don't stop chasing you. That's really. And there's statues in it that if you look at them and then you look away, they kill you instantly. So you, if you see one, you have to keep your eyes on it, or you just don't look at it. Oh, uh, I like that. That's pretty cool. Actually. Yeah. So that it's actually really. Creepy. So essentially, so that's it. No, but is it like what if you go around a corner? If you go around a corner and you walk, like there's one standing right there, you have to walk backwards around the corner, and you can't take your eye off it. But like, mm. but what would pop at the corner? Like, say if it, say if I'm like down this corner, I'm like, oh, start to step, and I turn around like this. I go back then. Do I? Well, I die as soon as it goes Did out. You imagine you're yeah. holding up your hands to describe to us and all. <laughs> well, it's it's as so long as you guys <laughs> you get can. it. Yeah. Because don't worry, no one's listening to this yet. <laughs> so it's, um, it's only for your benefit. It's, it's all good. Uh, well, it's it's cool as well because then if you if you close a door and then turn around, it will be at the door. Oh. Like it can't like go through walls, but like if you're kind of backing away around a corner and then you close a door and turn around and turn back, it'll just be like right at the door. That's pretty scary. Scary. I it's like really that. Really scary. I like but, that. But but it, like say say you're looking at it and you back around the corner. Does it then like move towards the corner or is it always locked in place? Like is it like cause you know way in, it sounds like the weeping angels are yeah, 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 yeah. But those can, those can move so long as nothing's looking at them. They only get locked in place when you see. I th- I think it moves close to the corner. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. Did you ever play SCP Containment Breach? Uh, does okay. that pretty well? Yeah. It's yeah. pretty freaky. That's like all those SCP stories, like that one that they fall that you can't look at or whatever. no one if you look away. Yeah, and so it's it's, it's essentially kind of like there's this website which is kind of like have you ever heard of Creepy Pasta? No. You know of Creepy <laughs> yeah, yeah, Pasta? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Jason, Jason's coming back. It's essentially <laughs> it's kind of like Creepy Pasta is like these horror stories, sort like a horror form for stories. Sorry, a so form like for horror, horror stories. It's like kind of came from the paranormal board on 4chan where you just have like a, a story someone would tell and then someone would copy and paste it and then people yeah. would be like oh creepy pasta thread and then thread and then people would paste in these weird stories and, and so the, the so SCP ones kind of became like a whole narrative that there was like yeah. 250 like like, ob- like, obje- like, like, 200 yeah, like, ob- like weird supernatural objects held by the government that all had like different powers and the kind of scary one of it was like the Weeping Angels it was like a big like Russian like doll that looked like a baby yeah, it was and weird looking. It was like, if you looked at it, like it couldn't move when it was being watched, but as soon as you looked away, it could move like at the speed of sound, and it would just like break your neck or like rip your head off. And it's it really just so yeah, it's yeah, like, it's the and it was like a really yeah, yeah. Like suck your life. But then the whole thing was like, if 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 a camera was on it, it wouldn't move. But they said when they turned the cameras off, you'd hear it scraping around, yeah, around like, the room, and like bang, and the room, and the, stuff. the room would had to be cleaned. The room would fill with blood and feces. They came oh, from from so nowhere. <laughs> And they'd yeah, have to send, yeah. they'd have the cameras and they'd send four people in to clean the room and two people would blink like asynchronously. Yeah. So nobody ever took their eyes off it. That's because so it would kill everyone in the room instantly if they stopped watching. Like, but but the really nice thing is they also, because originally that's how, so how the game starts out is you're kind of like, um, kind of like the low of the lowest grunt work people being sent in to clean out this thing's like pen. And you're just being sent in with three dudes, but then there's like a power figure essentially this thing gets out and you're like oh shit and originally it's what's chasing you but then the other scps get out so you have these thing this weird thing that it's kind of like slender man's bigger badder eviler brother who kind of like if you see him all you can do is run because he will uh, but i mean like just run like don't run like don't even like try and hide behind doors because he'll go through walls and stuff 
And as soon as he catches you, you switch to like an alternate dimension where he will like hunt you down in this alternate dimension thing. And it's so messed up. And it's like all these other types of like is weird this a game? ones. Yeah, yeah, this is a game. It, like, it started off as like the creepy pasta, then became a website, and then someone made a game out of it basically. Kind of like Slither. Is it on Steam? Um, I don't know. It's free for download just off the internet. Okay. So essentially, it's kind of like it's just yeah. all these. It sounds like the end of uh, Calvin Woods. Yeah, okay. it's, 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 it is that kind of vibe to it. Do, do, do you remember that game that was coming out? Um, that was by those people. I think it was by the same people who did Amnesia. Maybe I was wrong, but it was they were on Mars, and there was these robots that had like the memories and personality of people. Oh, Soma, that's not right, yeah. Soma, uh, yeah. Is, is that still being made? I just wanted yeah, to check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It had all those creepy videos of like people. A, the robot thinks that it's the real person. Yes. And then the real person comes in and starts talking to it, and then of course the robot starts freaking out because then it realizes that it's not a real person, and then the guy is freaking out because he's like. How is this coming? Mm. This is weird. I don't like this. So, so it's like, it's like yeah. <laughs> Those it looks weird. weird. There's like a like a thing. I don't saying the screenshot. It's just like a like a pulsing brain in like a like a, a, a jar. No, it's not like a jar. A dog. <laughs> <laughs> is it on a small cat? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's like sitting on like a, a plinth almost. But it's oh yeah, these, yeah, yeah. It's got yeah. these like weird wires and tubes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then it's like somehow controlling the environment. Or, with that's weird. Do you remember that other game where it's kind of like uh, it was like it literally was amnesia but with robots, and you're on the moon, and the moon I can't remember what it's called. It's probably moon something, or it's lunar, and um, like you go to the moon base. The moon base has been like completely abandoned. You're like oh. Why is this abandoned? And you're like looking why around it and stuff. <laughs> why am I? Sh- why are all my voices being? And uh, you're looking around this kind of like moon base, and these robots are kind of like just like. I wish I could remember. I but these robots was start chasing like, you. Was it out in the DS? No, it, I don't know if it's been released. That's what I was gonna ask. But I remember was, there was a game. I feel like, like I've seen that trailer. There was a game like that in, in the DS. Because it's like a robot. No, sees it was you. like it was like high fidelity. It was like full three yeah. D. They're literally kind of like robotic. Is it called routine? Yeah, they have like weirdly realistic faces, like plastic or something. What is it called? Sorry. Routine. Routine? Yeah. Uh, did that have a hacking mechanic though? I think it I think, did. I feel like it started off, you were like in the hacking into a terminal or something. And then yes, and you open a door, and I remember you looked down like at this robot through like these, this, like a night vision. Yeah. Right. Routine. Yeah, it actually looks like routine. Horror exploration game set in an abandoned moon base. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. pretty much it. Like yes. That. Is that it, yeah? Uh, I'll need it. Skip through that a wee bit. Yeah, yes. Okay, that, that is it. Yeah, that looks really good. That actually looks really cool. And it's, it's kind of like... The floor is very reflective. Oh, look at the little robot. It, it reminds me of... Alien Isolation. Yeah, it's got that sort of like retro feature. It's, 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 the, those guys are probably kicking themselves that Alien Isolation came out. Already. Yes. Because <laughs> they were probably working on it longer. But it looks good. It does look amazing. See, I didn't want to say it was Alien as Isolation with robots because Alien Isolation has, has robots. robots. Alien Isolation with scarier robots. Handies or something? What are they called? They're like Handy Tom or something. Handy <laughs> Tom. That oh, sounds like like the slang for a really yeah. like well, guy that touches you too much. <laughs> I'm sorry, you're a Handy Tom. <laughs> you're, you're not dealing with him. No, He's Handy Tom. Handy Tom. Oh, Handy Tom. <laughs> okay. No, I think because it was like. They grab you and choke you, but they're still like, How can I help you? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, that was, I can't remember what you call them, but they were like the early prototypes of the yeah. like the androids from the films. But that's uh, like it looks really good. Yeah, those robots look terrible. I, I, I find it like just the trailer, I thought it was quite scary looking. I just, There's blood everywhere. It, it really looks like System Shock or something as well. Mm. System Shock was a scary game. It was. I played that like last year and it was still terrifying. This is like a big yeah. resolve to make it all model. Yeah, is, like I, I tried to install the mod but I just couldn't figure out how to get it to work. But that's just classic me. See, <laughs> even indie developers now are remaking kind of like the, the big things. It's not just the fault of yeah. big corporate corporations. <laughs> that's getting back to our original point. Everyone's doing remakes. Yes. What is everyone's opinion on these remakes? Okay, well. I like them so long as they're sufficiently. You know, like old, it's. it's basically. Well, no, like, if they just reskin them, that's not good enough. Yeah. And if they just make them work on modern technology, it's not necessarily good enough. Like, I'd give Grim Fandango a pass because it, you know, 
like it lives and dies on its art. Yeah, like I, it's a very visual game because it's an adventure game. I think like the older a game is, the the be- it, you're happier with it being a remake. But as it gets newer, you're like, right, we need new stuff. Yeah. No, like I like a whole like if it was an actual remake. Yeah. Awesome, but like an HD edition, can, no, go yeah. out there, go away. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like I was playing the, this original resolution. It's like the paying another twenty quid. Just the, the Borderlands, just the Borderlands kind of re bundle is really stupid because that new Borderlands game was only out in like September. And they're they're already re-releasing it on current gen, so it's like they they released it on last gen purely so they could re-release it on current gen. Yeah. And it's like it came so late in those consoles life cycles that that's all they were doing. And then the Saints Row Four re-release is basically just the same game but poured over. And apparently, like the graphics aren't any better, and it still has the same technical problems. Oh, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize it was that bad. Like yeah. that's proper. Like these are games that literally just came out. But the the like, with the Borderlands one, they add four player co-op. Like four player couch co op, split screen. Oh, yeah, which they yeah, never they, had before. They needed that, yeah, and they needed it, that. it's bumped up to like 60 frames. And even the Devil May Cry remake is 1080p and 60 frames per second with a few some new, new, new stuff. Like black hair, yeah, yeah. Really hated it for yeah. No reason. Have you played it? I heard it was really good. It was just like everyone was like, he looks young. It's so, and it's so why stupid. Because he's punky. I've, I've, he's got a chain. Yeah, I don't like it. I've played all, hair white again. played all the Devil May Cry games, and I think that was my favorite one. I like that good. Yeah, like I, 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 I'm just not really. I, I'm, I lack dexterity enough for those sort of like hack yeah. and slash combo games. I'm usually it's not. The same reason why I won't play Bayonetta, but I will never play Bayonetta because Bayonetta is actually yeah. super. I was surprised by how good it was. Like I played it's, demo of it, and yeah, I was like, I can't do it. My hands just it's like, damn, this is a good game. I can play them like enough to beat them in like normal mode, but or like even hard mode at struggle. But I'm never like gonna be beating all the challenges and you know getting. Oh yeah, 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 like all that stuff. You're like you, you, your thumbs are literally bleeding by your smashing just that much, stumps. and at the end of the level, it's like. You got a minus C. It's like, fuck you, game. What do you want from me? Why? Why? To be better. I just want to unlock that last <laughs> I want you to be a B. <laughs> I want to be. No, because they've done... Uh, what's their next game? Because they did Enslaved, and Enslaved was really, really good. So I'm expecting them... Like that company, I can't remember what that company is called. like a Heavenly Sword sequel or something like that. Ugh. Or it's something like that. Well, I want to see them do something yeah. new, like something totally new, because they've done some pretty sweet stuff in the past. This is is yeah. this Ninja Theory we're talking about? Yeah. Yeah, yeah Ninja Theory. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. Did they not do that really bad Ninja Gaiden game? The more recent one. Did they? Oh, oh no, they didn't. No, they've got one coming out called Hellblade. Yeah, Hellblade. it's a like heavenly sword. Huh? And they did this. <laughs> they literally. Did. It's the opposite. <laughs> Hellblade. <laughs> yeah, apparently it's based on Celtic myth and stuff like that. There we go. It basically sounds like I'd have more red. Probably have another red. I'd more on the sword. I'd be up. I don't know. Yeah. I never. I never played them because it was. This, the trailer is focused on on Senua as she embarks on a very personal journey through a hellish underworld. Is yep. there a trailer for it? Let's see. <laughs> is Andy Serkins in this game? He could be. He probably will be. Andy Serkins plays the Hellblade. <laughs> <laughs> Fully CGI <laughs> mocap of Andy Serkins as the stand blade. Just completely still. <laughs> It's just all, like, like the video videos of like him and the rock covered in mocap stuff, and he's just swinging Andy Circus around by his feet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, well, no, it, it looks pretty, but we should stop looking up stuff on the internet. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just those silent dead periods. It'll take some time, but we'll get it there. Yes. Grow home. We will fix it. Ooh, yeah, it just came out. Mm-hmm. That looks cool. What is I it? I want to play it. Mm-hmm. Grow home. Mm-hmm. What is that? It's made by Reflections, which is weird because they're the people that make Driver. That is weird. Especially because it, it's nothing like Driver, fun enough. <laughs> <laughs> so you play this little robot called Bud, and yeah. it's a like botanical... I've only, seen, I've only seen images, and I was yeah. like, that looks pretty. It's like you're like this like cute little robot, and you control his, his hands, and maybe his feet as well. It's like a cli- you're climbing this, it's like a, a space tree. <laughs> it is it's called something like the star it's like the star tree or something like that I can't remember but basically you're just this little robot climbing this huge plant yeah and the that grows and changes as you climb and you control his hands independently and it looks delightful like <laughs> it, has, it, it looks does. simply it, delightful it, it does it looks, it looks delightful it's got this like yeah, it's bright so nice. simple art style everything's sort of like polygonal looking but it works mm. I, I don't know it looks really nice the like, thing that I like, don't sort of and, the know. thing that bugs me about that is the way the robot's feet move I get because it. I do oh, it's no. weird because it's sort of like the hands and feet it's almost like if you control them independently 
like when he walks, like his top half, it like kind of like it, if you go to turn, it like yeah. turns and then his feet catch up. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's it's, really it's, cool. Because his hands sort of were like held, like splayed out in front of him. Yeah. So, and then he's like, it's, you're following. <laughs> I want to be your friend. Oh. And you can see that. <laughs> I think it looks really, it looks weird, but it looks like. I don't know, because it looks like his legs are simmed. And it's like, why would you sit? It, like if you control the hat with the hands. If, and it if, follows the hands, then it is probably just like... If that's the case, the then I'm totally okay with it. If it's not, and they just for some reason have decided that's the way the robot should walk, then no! But why? No, it makes could, no difference. Could, I could don't... Control I, both it hats just looks really weird. weird. And just make them like spin around. Yeah, well, I, I think that's <laughs> like, like, it. Like, oh. it's, it's like, you know... You know, I mount your friends, but with two hands in 3D. Yeah. Have you ever mounted your friends? <laughs> Have you played that? Yeah. Mount your friends? It is one of the best party games ever. Right. It's hilarious. Why would you ask? It's a personal question. <laughs> like, of course. It's <laughs> a great party game. I have lots of parties. Yeah, I'm, I'm friends. I'm, I'm friends totally fucked over. Uh, no, but I've seen people playing it, and it looks like it would probably be mad crap. It is stupid, but it's so funny. Yeah. It's the fact that it's like it's got such like intense, <laughs> dramatic music. As you're, as you're climbing the, the, the bodies of all these like dudes with their <laughs> hanging out. Yes. <laughs> You know what's a really good game to play for parties? Cards Against Humanity. Oh, I love that game. It's so good. I, I <laughs> bought it. <that> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like when the next time that we're going out, remind me to bring in Cards Against Humanity into the office. And we'll play it. Before. And we'll yes. play it in the office, and we'll play it before we go out because it's so. It's like we, me and my mates, were like about to go out one night. And we got wrecked, and uh, we were gonna like. We were just playing it, and we spent. We were supposed to go to another friend's house, and two hours later, we we're sitting there still, still playing still this game. That was episode three of the Igloo Cast podcast. And if you liked what you listened to, you can subscribe on iTunes, give us a rating, all that usual jazz, or email me at jason at igloomedia.co.uk, and I will direct it to my spam box. Thanks for listening. Bye. Woo! Say bye. No.